Furrier here with Prith Banerjee, who is the Senior Vice President and Director of HP Labs. Very smart uh, man who has all access to the keys to the kingdom at HP. Prith, welcome to the, to the, uh, to the show. Thank you very much, John. So, um, obviously you run HP Labs, you're super smart, so you have a lot of smart people that work for you, and you see everything. You see the future, you play with the future, and you have to work with the management team at HP about what's going on in the present and help them guide them over. So, first of all, um, tell us, one, where we are now with HP Labs. You guys had a reorganization a couple of years ago around organizing all your themes and getting run focused. Give us an update on that, and then let's talk about kind of where we are today, then we'll talk about what's in the future. Great, so, as you know, John, uh, HP Labs is a corporate research arm for, uh, for Hewlett Packard, and uh, I've been associated with HP Labs for now about four years, and. Uh, about three and a half years ago, HP Labs went through a very uh, interesting strategic transformation. And as, as you mentioned, around eight themes of research where we took the creative energies of the, all the smart people at HP Labs and focused them on about 80, uh, about uh, 20 high impact research projects around these eight themes. Uh, so the themes, just to uh, recap the themes, they're around print and content delivery where uh, the future is going towards sort of moving from the analog world of printing to the digital world of printing, work on mobility and immersive experiences, sort of the future of mobile devices and how the way you interact with technology will change in the next uh, several years. Uh, a theme on cloud and security. You can see cloud and security is becoming very, very important now. Uh, this is something that we had started working on That looked like a good call. Ago. Good, good call back very then. Very good call. <laughs> uh, a lab, uh, a theme on information analytics, it's around Structured data, unstructured data, big data. Another good very, call. Very good call. <laughs> good Seems call. to be very relevant today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, technology around intelligent infrastructure, a view where we are going to collect a lot of information through nanoscale sensors, collect the data, store the data, process the data, and essentially create a very intelligent infrastructure for our customers in the future. Uh, that seems like a good call also. <laughs> uh, research on networking and communications, that's kind of the, the core foundation of how connectivity is actually brought from mobile devices to the cloud and so on. A theme around services, around looking at the kinds of how can you use technology to provide much better quality services in the future around certain verticals. And the last one is around sustainability, which is something that we felt was so important to society. Uh, lowering the carbon footprint, lowering energy consumption, and so on. So we have been at it now for about uh, three and a half years. We have had very significant progress, and the good thing is that, as you know, Leo announced the strategy for the company uh, around seamless, secure, context-aware experiences for the connected world. It's around pulling in cloud computing, which is the enabler in terms of computing, storage, and so on, uh, through all the billions of mobile devices that will be there, and what are you going to do with this, right? You're essentially analyzing information. So you look at our eight themes, they're so well aligned with HP strategy. Of course, as the forward-looking part of HP, that's our job, but we made some good calls. Yeah, I got to say, you know, for the folks out there, I met with Prith when two years ago when SiliconANGLE was just me, um, and we had a conversation, we had a chance to tour uh, HP Labs, talk to you, some of your top people. Um, um, Chandragan Patel. Yeah, I'm yeah, talking about sustainability. You guys really, really made a good call. And not only is it matched up with HP's strategy, it's really lined up with the mega trends right now that are that is lifting us out of this recession into a massive IT global and I, and global economic recovery. So it's super exciting. You have all the elements covered. They are good calls. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really excited that I had a chance to you know, see it early. Uh, but so let's talk about today, right? So. You have a new CEO who is an innovative guy. He likes tech. He's a he on the keynote. He said technically cool like three times. That's I like that. So he's got the pro innovation. So how do you feel about that? You must be like yeah okay. Absolutely. Mandate. He has been so supportive of innovation and HP Labs. In fact, I remember the the first day he joined HP, uh, he came over to HP Labs. I invited him to come over. He talked to me, the senior fellows, and talked about technology. And he has been extremely supportive of of HP Labs. And in fact, in the summit um, on March 14th, in his introductory paragraph, he talked about the innovations, the innovations coming out of HP Labs. He named 
the store ones, the deduplication technology that came out of HP Labs. He named the Sense technology, our sensors, nanoscale sensors, trying to uh, help one of our customers in the oil exploration area. He talked about the work on memristors. These are things that are innovations that work that we started at HP Labs. These are now in the process of being transferred to our businesses in the hands of customers. And here was Leo, day one, in the he did his first homework. day of the, su <laughs> the summit. He talked about it in his opening opening paragraph. I felt really good about it. It's really impressive. And, and how does that energize the team, your team? I mean, these guys walk away, this guy gets it. Are they like energized? What's the feeling they inside of HP Labs? They are so excited about him. In fact, he's coming to uh, Labs again for his another sort of deep dive visit. He's, he's been doing that. And uh, he has been very supportive of all the research. The Labs people are very excited and they, they can't wait to show things to to Leo, I mean, I just was talking to Chandagan. Chandagan had some interactions with him, and again, he he had a chance to talk to Leo about some of the sustainability ideas, and and he said, just go and do it. When Leo was in India, our my HP Labs director Sudhir uh, Dixit asked Leo some questions about can how can we bring this to market, and he said, so they just come on, bring it to market. So. Uh, extremely supportive of innovation. I'm excited for you and I'm looking forward to uh, digging deeper with HP Labs. We get a chance uh, after the show to, to, to visit you guys uh, down the street in Palo Alto. Um, let's talk about um, labs in general, R&D. You know, you know, there's been stories of cutting R&D. Now you've got a CEO who's going to prop up some of that, energizing the team. But in a lot of companies, R&D kind of sits out in the fence and they're out tooling away on the future, working on some crazy ideas, some applied research, some good research out, out, in, out in the edges but doesn't always make it back into the business. So that's changed under your leadership. And, and I've heard a rumor that, um, you know, based upon the big data pillar that you had a couple of years ago, you were pretty peaked on some of the trends in your research. And then all of a sudden, Leo comes in with, uh, I believe Shane or some other folks and said, hey, I want to get Vertica. Buys Vertica, plops out of the market, takes that up the table. And, and I heard a rumor that now they're working with the, some labs teams and some analytics labs. I mean, the team put together, is that true? Can you confirm that? Yes, and, and we are very excited about it. So uh, the, let me talk about the information analytics agenda from HP Labs, and then I will t tell you how we are syncing up with, with Vertiga. So the problem that we, are, that we identified is about what we call big, fast, total data. So big is, so anybody can analyze a gigabyte of data. If you do a thousand gigabytes, that's a terabyte of data. You take a thousand terabytes, that's a petabyte of data. A thousand petabytes, that is zettabyte of data. So you are talking big data, lots and lots of data, and can you analyze it in real time as it comes in, right? So the, the fast data is trying to analyze the stuff as fast as your business is running. So at the speed of business. So people in the past have done business intelligence trying to correlate statistical correlations between all customers who bought uh, bounty paper towels also buy Charmin bathroom tissue. At the end of the week, end of the month, end of the year, do those analysis. That's not relevant anymore. You need to do it at the speed of business. The third thing is around total data, which is structured and unstructured data. If you look at the amount of data that is being generated today, it's doubling every 18 months, and 80% of the data is actually unstructured data. So you look at this, big, fast, total data coming at you through a variety of sources, these sort of billions of nanoscale sensors, the tweets that are happening on Twitter, the social media, the Facebook updates and so on, how are we going to analyze it all? So within labs, we have three projects, uh, one of these three big bad projects, one on what we call taming the information explosion, trying to cr extract metadata about the data, looking at this essentially looking at the unstructured data and trying to put some structure to it and then storing it in the, stru the structured forms of data. A project on live business intelligence, looking at the amount of data that's coming in very fast and analyzing it at the speed of business, applying it to domains like what we call live operational intelligence, live customer intelligence. And the third one is around IT informatics, looking at the amount, large amounts of data that the IT industry creates, the server errors, this thing, server going down, this network, Think popping and looking at all this data within the IT world, doing data mining on it, and helping the CIO making better decisions. So this was the research agenda for labs, right? We were looking at, if, when you, if you're trying to build a thing like this, you need sort of a higher level integration layer, a layer that will in, sort of talk to the customers through the interface layers and so on. You need a analytics layer, you need a storage layer, and some sort of the servers and architectures to build on it. So when we are looking at the kind of storage layer that we need, 
we were following up what is going on in the area in terms of columnar stores and data stores and in-memory database and so on. Looked at Vertiga, made obviously the, liked uh, it. the company, <laughs> made, uh, it, it made a lot of business sense for yeah. the company, liked it. Vertiga is now actually being incubated. It's under, uh, sitting under Shane Robinson. It's under Shane, that's right. And, and I report to Shane, Chris Lynch from Vertiga reports to Shane, so Chris and I had a good conversation. The engineering teams have got together and we are trying to uh, align our ducks, the it's HP too, Labs I mean, effort. Basically, yeah, so basically, I mean, basically you confirm that there's an initiative underway with Labs, that's cool, great. Also, Vertica's too important to just give away right now to what makes sense to a division maybe. There's a bigger picture there. So, you know, you got this arc, you got this Vertica. It, it had, it's got, you can do things with it now. We heard from ESSN has an appliance. Uh, Paul Miller came on, talked about that. Dave Donatelli talked about that. So they instantly grabbed the big data piece and actually shipped the product in yes. like two months. Right. Um, so, but it's still kind of hanging out there. Um, what is the big story with Vertica? Is there, I mean, that's a big asset for HP. What's the vision? I mean, do you have any, can you share with us the future of what Vertica could morph into? Is it an well, arms uh, dealer to every division for big data? Is it <laughs> that's a business decision. So what I can tell you about is how excited we are from a research perspective to work together with the Vertical team and bringing outstanding technology in the hands of our business leaders who will then figure out the business models to, to bring it to market. Great, well that's exciting. So a couple other questions I have for you. Um, this is, by the way, this is very exciting. We're here at Prith Banerjee who runs HP Labs, a storied, a great set of smart nodes, people in there doing some great research, all focused under some cool themes, some good choices, all lined up with the big trends. Um, operating systems. Um, every time a new trend comes in, it's a death of something. It's been the death of the mainframe, was death of client server, now it's death of the PC. And it really never changes, no one ever dies, it just kind of morphs into a new form. But with cloud and big data and mobility, say cloud and mobile and social, those kind of mega trends. Um, what is the, the future that you see in those areas? Because they're changing, right? Cloud is now going mainstream. Steve Jobs announced iCloud. That's going to take the nomenclature to a whole nother level. Um, and so, is there a cloud operating system? We've talked about the data center operating system in the past with some of your folks. How's the systems architecture going to change in the future? Is it going to be distributed? Is it already distributed? How do you see that kind of forming? What does some of your research tell you about the future operating so systems? So again, uh, my team at HP Labs, they are working on the same exact topics that you talked about, right? So my, the cloud and security lab, they are working on some very, very innovative IP in, in the form of, so people are now convinced that Cloud is a very interesting business model, and instead of trying to own your own IT assets, you should sort of pay for it as you go. So you do compute as a service, storage as a service, and so on. So you some, see some initial versions of sort of public cloud offerings from a, a, a set of vendors. But we at HP Labs sort of recognize that the real opportunity is in the enterprise, in, in terms of the amount of data that's out there. You need to deliver it in a very secure manner, highly scalable manner, very highly reliable and highly available manner, right? So at Labs, we are building this sort of enterprise grade um, cloud platform. Uh, our internal name for it is called Sirius. And essentially using virtualization technology, we, we allow sort of application developers to create these virtual compute cells, storage cells, and, and by having what we call network virtualization, we are able to enable customers to have these multi-tenanted applications so that the, I, the applications are isolated from each other and that's extremely important in the cloud. You don't want my application on the cloud impacting your application running on the shared infrastructure. So that is a very, very key thing. Along with it is sort of programming environments and so on, but there is a desire for enterprises to uh, use the hybrid cloud which is private cloud for most of the, uh, of the computations and storage, but periodically when you need to flex your needs, you can go over to the public cloud. How do you do that in a very seamless manner, going to the hybrid cloud? Again, those are technologies that are being worked on at labs. Security is a very, very key uh, enabler. Every person you talk to says, we are really scared about the security. How w w will what I do here impact it, right? Then you talk about how people access the cloud. It's essentially through these end terminals, so the connected devices that tens of billions of, of smartphones and tablets and 
and PCs and notebooks and printers and so on, all of them, again, HP's bet is around WebOS. The same seamless experience on these multiple touch points, accessing data, computations, et cetera, on the cloud. Now, the, the real deal is that people have these two lives, right? We have the personal life. We do things on the cons as a consumer. Yeah. We are playing games, Mafia Wars or Angry Birds on our smartphone and tablets. And the same device, we would like it to also do things on the enterprise. Now, typically, CIOs and enterprise, they, are, they do not want to allow these devices in the enterprise network. So for the enterprise, you have to use a PC. For your other stuff, you use your smartphone and tablet. We think it's the same device. It should be the same device. So we at Labs... And the consumer does too. They consumer. want it to be the same so device. So at, at, at Labs, for example, we have a, a, an effort called Manage Cloud Communities, which will enable CIOs to manage your same devices, right? Your, you as a consumer can use your device for whatever consumer applications you want, and you can, the CIO can enable you to do the enterprise applications, and the two worlds will not uh, hit each other. I mean, those kind of isolation is going to be so key. So those are some of the, uh, the key IP that are being developed at Labs. And, and, it has to be, and it has to be abstracted away. The complexity has to be completely abstracted away, right? Completely intelligent. Absolutely. It cannot be user interaction. It's got to be completely under the covers. And it's the so future of technology is around how humans interact with this technology, right? I mean, the, the, the reason these tablets and smartphones have become so popular is, I mean, cell phones a few years ago, you have to use a keyboard yeah. to, to dial a phone, right? Now you use this touch and these incredible ways you can just expand, delete, move things around, right? That you can see in, in operating systems like WebOS and others. But we at Labs are thinking about where is the future of interfaces. So we, are work, we have a project on rich intuitive interfaces where you can use gestures, gestures and speech, combine them together, essentially making it so much more intuitive, it's like two humans talking to each other. I tell you, we could put a cube in HP Labs all day long, broadcasting 24-7, it'd be very exciting. Um, it's so much excitement going on. You guys are really in the right spot. Prith Banerjee, Senior Vice President, he runs HP Labs. We're inside the cube. We extract the knowledge from the smartest guys in the planet, and he's one of them right here. Um, one of my final questions is mobility. Obviously, you guys saw it coming. You had an initiative in place. Is there anything in the mobility side that has surprised you or has changed your agenda on research? Um, you know, obviously, the app craze, but it's, I mean, it's creating new data. I mean, is it all of the above? How has mobile changed your agenda and has anything surprised you about the rapid growth of mobile? Uh, HP Labs, when we picked our research agenda four years ago around those eight themes and so on, I mean, the mobile immersive experience was the front of it. We, we saw it come in. So it actually didn't surprise us from a research perspective. Now, bringing it to market, obviously there has been some very successful uh, uh, installations of, of devices and so on that we see. We are very excited about it. Our research agenda is working on those same kind of technologies. I think uh, where we see the opportunity in the mobile is how people today see all these apps in the consumer world, right? You download this app, that app on your favorite uh, smartphone. Uh, we see a similar way of downloading apps in the enterprise setting and a way to actually provide that seamless experience across the consumer apps and the enterprise apps on your same mobile device. But when you, and you should be able to leverage off the consumer world and the uh, enterprise world. But the key thing is how you keep these two worlds separate and isolated. So what you do in the consumer world cannot in any way impact or hurt the enterprise world. Final questions, I know you got to go see Leo and keynotes and all the things you got on your agenda. Really appreciate you spending the time. You're really busy and, uh, and, and spending time with us is fantastic and I'm glad to share it. My final question is you mentioned um, you know, sustainability, which we, we had more time, we could talk about another half hour on that, uh, and changing the world. Um, so the final question for you is more of a personal question. Um, with all your knowledge of what you're seeing within HP Labs and the work you've done to kind of straighten that agenda and get it focused on the mega trends and align that up, what you're seeing internally at HP and then what you're seeing externally outside in the world, how is technology going to change society in, as a, on a global scale in the next uh, decade? That's a really good question. In fact, our sustainability uh, research group led by Chandragan Patel, senior HP senior fellow, is looking at exactly, precisely those kind of societal challenges. So, Within the sustainability group today, we have a project on sustainable data centers, which as, as you and your readers probably viewers know, that data centers in the world of IT consume a lot of energy. And it is, that's the reason why 
these large data centers are located in certain regions of the US where the energy costs are quite low. But we believe in what we call a net zero data center. So the over a say three year period or five year period, the amount of energy that will draw from a public electric utility grid is zero. So essentially we have a, what we, our approach is to look at a demand side view and a supply side view. In terms of supply, we'll have electric as one of the supplies, but you're looking at solar, we're looking at, at, uh, at biofuels, we're looking at, in fact, there was an interesting article on farm waste and converting that into this. Uh, uh, and so, and clearly you have to, there are parts of the day when you'll have more solar energy and you'll have generate more energy than your data center uses. So you'll need to store that energy and you give it back to the electrical grid. Other times you'll suck energy from the electrical grid. So we, uh, we had proposed a net zero data center and that design has been completed. Chandragan's team, Cullen Bash and, and others have done it. We are now thinking about the future, how we can apply the same sustainability techniques to the city scale, design of future cities. S societally, the kinds of problems that we'll face are resources, issues about energy, about water and so on. The world is going to run out of, of, sort of clean water to drink in, in some parts of the world, right? So how can we use sensors and actuators to actually do a very good area of, sort of sub match supply and demand and come up with a much more sustainable society? These are societal problems to solve. HP Labs is working on them. And we believe that once you solve the societal problems, the business results will follow. Crisp energy, society's changing. There are big problems that are being solved. HP Labs is doing some great work. Thanks so much for coming inside the Cube. Uh, great to see you again, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, John.